everyone, it's Lucy from kbeautyhobby.com. I can't believe it's already time for another fails and faves video. And this one is going to combine May and June because I just didn't get to film one for May. So you get a few extra products. And this time I mostly have faves, but the couple of fails that I have are big fails and you probably want to hear about them. The first one is a much awaited new release by Claire's. If you remember back in 2020, there was a so-called Korean sunscreen controversy, although I feel like that's a little misleading because a lot of sunscreens test below the stated SPF, not just in Korea, but all over the world, and that's not a reason not to use sunscreen. However, after all of that, a lot of brands recalled or stopped production of their formulas or, or paused them, and now this year we have a lot of new ones coming out, and usually the one good thing that came out of this whole controversy is that now we typically get a release of test results along with the new product so that we can be more confident that the stated SPF on the label is the actual SPF of the product. Well, the Claire's sunscreen, their original formula that came in a white tube, was widely popular. I personally have never used that one. I loved their blue tube that was all mineral filters. The white tube was all chemical filters. It's not that one's better than the other, I just didn't get to try the chemical one. So now Claire's came out with the new version of the chemical filtered sunscreen. It is Claire's All Day Airy Sunscreen, SPF 50, PA++++, vegan friendly. I was super excited to try this because again, it is just such a long-awaited formula and unfortunately I really dislike it. When I first apply it, it seems everything's okay, there's no white cast on this, however, it is tacky to the touch, and even after I top it off with a layer of translucent powder, it still feels sticky and tacky throughout the day, even hours and hours later. I apply all sunscreens around the eye area as well, because that delicate skin is very important to protect from the sun, but with a Claire sunscreen, it feels really sticky and heavy on the eyelids. And as my workday went on, I've tried this a few times, but this happened every time. As the day went on, I think it started to migrate into my eyes more. It didn't irritate them in a sense that it was itchy or stingy or red or anything like that, but my eyelids just felt so heavy and oily and just gross. It made me keep wanting to touch my eyes and rub them, and then doing that irritated them in more traditional ways. So I actually, on my last test of this, I couldn't stand it for even a full work day, which my work days in the office are only five hours. I couldn't even deal with the five hours of this. I had to go into the bathroom and rinse it off with water off of my eyes. That didn't even help. I didn't get any relief until double cleansing that night or full relief. It did get a little bit better after rinsing. So for me, this is a big fat fail. I don't like wasting things, so I've been using this on the body, but even on the body, it is tacky to the touch. It's not as huge of a deal on the body as it is on the face, but it's still unpleasant. I can't imagine like being outdoors and actually in contact with nature while wearing this, because I feel like I would attract all the little leaves, dust, sand, whatever. So I've been putting it on my arms and legs when I'm just out walking and then basically showering right after. But to me, this is a big fat no. That's not to say that you won't like it, but unfortunately for my combination skin, it just doesn't work. Next is the Medicube HR Deep Shot device. Kind of a long name. I've seen it just referred to as Deep Shot as well. Uh, but it is supposed to stimulate collagen production deep within the layers of the skin. I have a full article about this. The article was a sponsored review. This video is not sponsored. I genuinely really enjoy this. It's really cool. You turn it on, it lights up blue, and then you hold it to the skin with special conductor gel and hold this button here, and it turns red, and it feels a little bit warm as it sends a shot into your face. It doesn't hurt. It does feel a little bit warm. I do see results, especially in the lower area of my face. That's probably my biggest insecurity ever, the double chin. Some of it uh, is genetic. Even with drastic weight changes, it has not gone away for me. And I'm already a very frequent and consistent microcurrent user, and I love microcurrent. I've done reviews on the Bear device. I used to use uh, the New Face one, but I prefer the Foreo Bear. This, to me, gives a better, more immediate tightening and lifting effect on the lower face, but I still use microcurrent on the other days as well. Overall, this has just been a really nice addition to my skincare routine, and more importantly, it is such a joy to use. I actually enjoy the process and that little warming sensation. 
that I keep reaching for it because to me devices are useless no matter how amazing they are they're completely useless if you're not actually going to go through the motions of using them so it's an important part of any device for me is okay how often do I actually reach for this and I've been consistently using this and really liking it. The next fave is the Stelsi Tilsi correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure I'm wrong but it's their kombucha line there's the essence cream and and this ampule. All three are amazing. Beam used Korea sent these to me and I love little shops or they're not that little anymore but they're a smaller store that curate their own collection and that's how I often discover smaller brands that are not well known and that I otherwise may have not seen. I'm really liking this in particular because it's great for hydration and plumping. It does have some essential oils in it, so if you're sensitive to that, definitely review the ingredients before you purchase. The cream is really nice. I almost expected a gel consistency from this. I'm not even sure why, probably because the only other kombucha cream I've had was Dr. Circle. And that one is a gel cream, but this one is thicker and more nourishing. It's definitely an evening product for me, but again, I'm just really loving it. And all three of these, I'm running out of hands, all three of these have a really nice slip to them when I'm applying them. So I like to take a little bit extra time in the evenings when doing my skincare routine and just massaging the face because these get nice and slippery in a good way. And then by the time I wake up, my face looks really nice and plump, especially it helps with these uh, horizontal lines on my forehead that definitely become a lot more noticeable when my skin is dehydrated. The next fail are easel nails. You've probably seen these mentioned. I've done a tutorial video on these on my channel. These are semi-cured gel strips. You put them on your nails, trim them, stick your hand under a UV or LED light, finish curing them and you're supposed to have a really nice at-home DIY manicure. I have double negative impressions of this. First of all, these just didn't last really well. They look good once applied, but they only last for four days on me before they start peeling at the tip. And that's even after I apply a clear gel over the top, sealing the ends, sealing the free edge. So really this shouldn't happen, but it happened both times. I tried these twice, two different sets. I had a pastel rainbowy one at first and I had a solid red. I haven't tried this set and I'm probably not going to just because it's not worth to me going through the motions of applying these and spending the time just to have them peel up uh, after four days. That's just not enough wear time. And then the red set also had some manufacturing imperfections uh, in the sense that the surface of the nail, the top part of the sticker wasn't smooth like it should be and when I pointed this out to the brand because if I were a brand owner I would want to know something like that because that means the quality control failed uh, but also with the lifting that just shouldn't happen like that um, they <laughs> took that into consideration sort of but then they also asked me not to post the video and I think that is just very deceptive uh, they try to <sighs> okay I just had a haircut recently and the hair is getting in my face it is crazy. Okay, okay, stay out of my face. <laughs> Maybe, there, I'll do that. So they asked me not to post the video. I did post it anyway. Um, and their whole argument was that online reviews have a huge impact on them and they're a small women-owned brand. Okay, fine, I'm also a small business. I'm also woman-owned. I'm the smallest business I know because I'm just one person. However, it's not honest to ask people not to post slightly negative feedback. I mean, I don't think my video was mean. I'll link it in the description below so you can watch it yourself. I think it was really fair and very honest. Like I said, these do look good when you first apply them. They just need to last longer and then to figure out that whole thing with the quality control as to why one set wasn't totally smooth on the top. It was fixed when I applied a top coat, but you shouldn't have to do that. They should be fine out of the package without any extra steps. So it did leave a really bad taste in my mouth that they asked me not to post the video, especially since they haven't even seen the video beforehand. I was under no obligation to make that, I just wanted to. And so the fact that they didn't even watch it, they just assumed um, just because of that ridging um, that was shown in there that it was going to be bad or negative and they asked me not to post it. I think that's just not cool. So 
I just, yeah, it's a fail for me for more, <laughs> more than one reason. Next fave is the Isentry Vegan Milk Cleanser. This is such an awesome one-step cleanser. I'm a big fan of double cleansing. I like using a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm and then a foaming cleanser. However, sometimes my skin doesn't take so well to me testing a lot of products on it and I've been a little overly zealous with Tretinoin as well and have given myself some flaking and dryness. This is a really nice gentle cleanser for those times or if you just generally have sensitive skin because it takes everything off, makeup, uh, sunscreen in one step. You just start with dry hands and dry dirty face, pump this out, it comes out sort of like liquid lotion, massage it on your face and then rinse with water and that's it, you're done. Just really, really nice and it has yam extract in it, which I've seen another brand, Vigreen, use yam extract to make a vegan mucin product, so a vegan alternative to snail mucin. And this has a similar texture to snail mucin in a sense that if you put it in your palm and then hold the palms together and like separate them, you get that stringing that snail mucin products have sometimes and it feels a little bit slippery on the skin as you use it in a good way. I do have reviews for a lot of these products. If you want more detailed stuff and like to check out the ingredients, I'll put links to the reviews in the description box. You can also go to my blog kbeautyharvard.com and just use the search button. It's in the blue bar right under my name or right under my face on the side. You can put in like Isentree or whatever product you want to see and it should pop up with a review if I have one or you know ask me a question in the comments. But I have to keep the reviews kind of brief in the videos because if I go on and give you all the information that my articles have in this video, we're going to be here forever. But this was definitely a fave. Another fave is a new to me brand called Secret Soft Society and they have products made specifically for the body. Bemuse Korea sent these to me for review. So I'll either have those published by the time that you're watching this video or they're coming soon, so stay tuned. Um, it's a body toner that is exfoliating. It's really cool because it comes in an aluminum bottle, which is supposed to be more sustainable and easier to recycle. To me, just from the aesthetics of it, it's really nice, and I haven't had any skincare in aluminum bottles as far as I remember. But also, it's just really easy to apply to the body because it's a spray. So I spritz this on my legs to help with ingrown hairs and just help with the overall texture of the skin. The one small criticism I have for this, or the one thing that would make it even better, is if it worked upside down, because a lot of times when I'm spraying my legs, I'll kind of go above the knee and close to the knee in this way, bending down, right? But then when I get to the ankles, it would be easier if I could hold it upside down and spray. That doesn't really work. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me, but that would be kind of a cool modification if the brand could make that. If you are shopping on Bemused Korea, you can use my code LUCY15 for a discount on any full priced items. Um, these were recently on sale, um, so my code doesn't work on things that are already on sale, but if you're buying something that is uh, full price, you can definitely use that code. And in general, I have a lot of different discount codes with various shops. I always include those in the description box on the bottom below all the product links and stuff like that. Just a couple more faves left. One of them is this Japanese Rotha Mentholatum Lip Fondue in Illumina Gold. It's a lip balm. It popped up when I searched on Yes Style for lip SPF, and I love Rotha Mentholatum's lip SPFs already. This one doesn't say anywhere that it has an SPF, like SPF 25 or 30, it doesn't list that anywhere. But when I read the ingredients, it says that it has a UV cut or UV protector in it. So I'm not sure if this is an SPF product. And if you know, please let me know. But just as a balm, it's amazing. It has, it's, it's golden and it has this little gold shimmer in it when I put it on. It's not super in your face gold shimmer. It's subtle, but it's still noticeable. And this definitely feels like almost a cream to the lips. It goes on so soft and smooth, it's like a hug. It's amazing. I'll just caution you the first time using it, don't push too hard. It's much, much softer than most lip balms. So the first time I used it, I almost took off a chunk of the product because it's so soft and I didn't expect it to be that soft. Now I just use very, very gentle pressure. It's not at all like normal lip balms. It's much, much, much softer, but that's one of the reasons that I really enjoy it. And it's not very expensive as far as I remember. I did buy this with my own money. It wasn't PR. Last but not least is Farmstay Hair Shining Silk Repair Hair Mask. 
Farm Stay as a brand in general is coming a long way, I feel like. When I first started using them, they had really large packages of things. So if you bought a face lotion, it was a giant bottle, almost as big as this. They had the 3-in-1 honey ampules that basically would take me like three years to finish by myself in really big jars. So they had very generous sizes, but it all felt a little cheaply made. And don't confuse cheaply made with affordably priced. It just felt cheaply made. Like in-your-face fragrance and colorants in the products. I don't know, it just looked like something that would appeal to my four or five-year-old at the time. But now, three or four years later, it seems like they really changed their branding and everything seems to be a little bit more like toned down as far as packaging. Their fragrances are more... I don't know what the right word is. Sophisticated, maybe? I don't know. It just feels better now. I like the brand more now than in the past. And this hair mask is really nice. I use it as conditioner from ear level down. I have an oily scalp and then normal to dry hair. It's color treated with henna. So it's kind of a balance for me to not overdo it with my roots. I don't want to make them oilier, but I do want to protect the main length of the hair and then I want to nourish the main length of the hair without stripping the color. This does all of that for me. Again, I don't put it on the roots, but this takes really nice care of the main length. I've used this before I had my hair cut as well when my hair was much, much longer and it's just nice. It makes my hair nice and soft and smooth and tangle-free, but doesn't make it greasy and doesn't make it oily or shiny in that greasy way. It just gives it a little bit of a healthy sheen, I would say. I don't know, it's just really nice and it's a very generous package too. And if I remember right, it's not that expensive either, but don't quote me on it. I'll put a link in the description box. I have a hard time remembering all the pricing right off the bat, so plus it varies so much by vendor. This one came from Stylevana, so I'll put a link in the description box. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was fun, educational, useful. If you have your own fails and faves, please share them in the comments because I'm always looking for suggestions on the new things to try or things to maybe stay away from. Although, of course, we're all different, so if I don't like something, you might absolutely love it. And I always hope, actually, that people like their purchases. A lot of the time when I post a negative review, I'll get comments like, oh no, I just ordered this, or I wish I had read it before, I, before ordering well you know if you just ordered something just because I didn't like it doesn't mean you won't we're all different and it might work really well for you and I actually hope it does work for you because it just stinks to spend money and then not like something so you can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, my blog kbeautyhobbit.com, and in my private Facebook group, Grey and Beauty Fanatics. We have over 70,000 members and growing. I'd love to have you there if you're not there already. I'll see you in my next video, and until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much. Bye.